Hey, I'm Jess. May's a great time to garden. May's also a great time to read picture books about gardens. And so today I want to recommend four books that I think both you and any kids in your life will enjoy. Up first is If You Plant a Seed by Kadir Nelson. Kadir Nelson paints beautiful illustrations for his books. They're always gorgeous, and this one is no exception. It's the story of a rabbit and a mouse who have planted a garden. It's lush, it's full of vegetables. Everything is good until the day the birds show up and they decide that they want to eat it too. And the rabbit says, no. And we see that if you plant a seed of selfishness, it will grow and grow and grow, but it doesn't lead anywhere good. And they get into this big skirmish. But thankfully the mouse decides to share. And we see that if you plant a seed of kindness, it will grow and grow and grow and grow, but this time it will grow into something very sweet beautiful book with a beautiful message and it's one that I think you can use in lots of ways with lots of kids. So what I like is that there aren't many words on the pages and they're very well chosen and so it's one that reads well. Since there aren't tons of words, it's one that you can use with preschool, but you can also use it with kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. You can use it all the way up. It works for all of them. There are plenty of pages where there aren't any words. So this is really good if you wanna talk about context clues, if you want the kids to kind of decipher and figure out what's going on. There's lots of places where they have to do that and there's not any words to support it. This is a good story if you are talking about gardens. This is a good story if you're talking about sharing. I think this is also a really good one for cause and effect. I think you could easily um, work it into cause and effect lessons. So there's lots of ways to use it, but maybe just read it because it's a beautiful story about kindness and don't we all need more kindness in our life? If you plant a seed, Kadir Nelson. This next one is Dandy, and it's by Amy Dykeman. Amy Dykeman is an author you might know from Wolfie the Bunny, and much like that book, this one has kind of a quirky sense of humor. She does that really well. It's about a daddy lion and his daughter, and the daddy lion has a pristine, perfect yard until the day it grows a dandelion. And I love that all of the dads in the neighborhood come over and they tell him, you know what you have to do, and he does. But the problem is his daughter has fallen in love with this dandelion. She named it Charlotte. Every time he tries to sneak in, she's there. And so there's all these great pictures where he's trying to like sneak by. You have lots of great expressions on his faces. This would be a good one to talk about um, emotions with kids or have them try and figure out, well, how is he feeling? Um, it's also just a lot of fun and very funny. So he tries all of his best tricks and the dads in the neighborhood are just kind of mad too. Um, Amy Dykeman actually explains in a note at the end that she got the idea of this from her childhood neighborhood because there are many dads in her neighborhood who were very into their yards. So I think that's kind of funny. Um, one day though, finally, one day his daughter has to go to swim lessons and now is his chance. What will he do? Don't you hate when people don't tell you what happens? I'm not going to tell you what happens, but I will tell you it's going to be fine. Um, so this is a nice um, father-daughter story. It's a lot of fun. Kids know dandelions. They know they already have an opinion on whether or not it's a weed or a flower, so you can talk about that. Um, please do explain the joke, though. Um, I've used this for story time all week. It's been so fun. It works really well with a group. It would work really well one-on-one. -on -one. But lots of the kids miss the fact that they're lions because it's a dandelion. So do yourself a favor and explain that to them because their reaction faces will be so fun. <laughs> Truly very fun. But also it's more fun for them when they get all of the jokes. So make sure you explain that they're lions and it's a dandelion. Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner is the next book. This is one that I like because it shows the life of a garden. And so it follows a grandmother and granddaughter who are growing a garden and you see it throughout all the different seasons. What I like is that we're getting all the insects and all the animals. So it's focusing on all the things in nature that influence how the garden works. Um, I like that we get pages like this where we can see here is, of course, the garden, but you're also seeing the importance of the bees in the air and the worms underneath and the roots. So it's giving you that kind of overall whole view. Um, I like that you get to see all like the little moments of joy. So here's like, oh, they're playing with the hose. Here's a nest of robins. Um, I think my favorite page is probably the one with the skunk at night. And it's just 
working the night shift as she says and it's gobbling cutworms and I like that we see it with I don't know charter or, um rhubarb whatever it is but it's just it's cute seeing skunks I guess at least one's on a page drawn in a book. Um, and she doesn't shy away from nature. So we get other pages where um, there is a snake eating a cricket, I believe. So we're seeing, okay, that's what nature, or a grasshopper. So we're seeing that's what nature is like. So this is a really good book for kids who like all the details, for kids who like the bugs, who like seeing what happens. In her endnote in the back, um, she explains that every garden is a community garden. And I loved that thought. And she says, in order for it to thrive, we have to do our work, but we also need the help of the gardeners underground. So every garden is a community garden. Um, Kate Messer has also added in an about the animal section, which is great because you're getting um, animals that you might not know about. So there's tomato hornworms, there's honeybees, there's cutworms, long legged spiders. So you're getting more information. This is a book that I think is best one-on-one. -on -one. It's great for the kids who like digging around in the dirt, who like the insects, who like seeing all the details. I think it would be fun for them to kind of peruse the pages and see all the things they notice. So you're gonna have the most luck, I think, um, as a lap book or as a one-on-one -on -one read. So Up in the Garden, Down in the Dirt by Kate Messner. I love this book. I Can Only Draw Worms by Will Mabbitt. <laughs> This one is begging to be read aloud matter-of-factly. I can only draw worms. Um, every time I use it as a story time, I start with that. And the kids are like, oh, they can draw other things. And I'm like, I can only draw worms. He can only draw worms. It is such a fun read aloud. So you start off and there's just worms. And we're going to get up to 10 worms. But there's all these little jokes along the way because the worms look alike. Because of course they do. They're worms. And so he adds worm. He adds glasses. So you can tell that's worm number two. Um, there's some really funny times where he tells you something very exciting is going to happen. And all the kids are like, oh, okay. And they're ready for the next page. And he's like, I can't draw any of that. I can only draw worms. So we'll skip it. And they get so frustrated, but they also they also kind of like it. Um, I think the joke that goes over the best is the one where one of the worms goes missing and you don't know where he is. And then he shows up and you find out, well, he was in the bathroom. And all the kids just kind of nod because they've been that kid, they've had their friend go missing and they were in the bathroom. So I think Will Mabbitt really gets he gets what kids like. This is one of those books that's so fun to read to a group of kids, but it's also really fun one-on-one. -on -one. I will say that this is the sort of book that you have to read over and over and over because it's the kind of thing that they just kind of grip onto and fall in love with. The good news is it's a pretty short book. It's also a really fun book to read aloud. So even if you have to read it five or six or 50 times, I think you're going to get a lot of fun out of it. So I Can Only Draw Worms by Will Mappet. I hope uh, one of those books or all those books sound good to you and that you find a kid and you read one because what's better than reading in gardens? Not much. <laughs>